Hi. In this video today, I'm going to show you how to get around the new app from Goenna Telemetry. First of all, a bit about the app. It's uh, available on iTunes, so it's available for iPhone and also Android. And you can also use it on your desktop. So it's like a website as well. And uh, if you just go to this URL here, and I'll give you some more details on that later, you can also just use it in your browser on your desktop. Now the look and feel is pretty much the same, no matter what device you use it on, but there are some features that are available on desktop that aren't available on your mobile device. And basically that's just two things, which are the exporting to PDF or exporting to Excel. If you want to do that for your data, you need to do that on your desktop. Okay, so let's start. I'm just going to go around a bit about the navig navigation first. So all our navigation is done using this little icon at the top. So to get to the menu system of the app, you just click on that icon and it will expose the menu system for the app. And then it's just like any other app. So let's start, we'll have a look at the about. We have a bit of detail about going into telemetry, a bit of detail about the developer, privacy statement, and terms of use. Let's have a look at the next one. This is the location map. Now this is, I'm going to go and talk about it briefly here. We'll come back to it in more detail. But what you can do here is look at all your devices or locations in terms of geographical location. Now obviously your location must have GPS coordinates set on it. But if it does, then we will map it on here. And we'll give it a pin and that pin color will represent what kind of device it is. So this light blue, for instance, if I click on that, you'll see is a weather station. And you also notice that I live in Newcastle, so it centered me around Newcastle. The, the program will look at your GPS coordinates of the device you're using and position the map around where you are if it can. Now obviously I can scroll around this and look at other locations. I'm just gonna try and find We've got a lot of locations on here because we're mapping our bomb locations as well. But here's a couple of other devices you can see here. This is a satellite field or a GoSat field you may know it as. Here's a dam monitor and so on. So that's the mapping and I'll come back to that in a bit more detail later. The next kind of information you can get is non-geographical but it's listing of information. So we've broken up all your locations into their categories here. You'll see weather stations, probes, satellite, dam monitors, and etc. And so you can actually just click on one of these and it'll just filter out your locations based on that device type. So if I go into weather stations, for instance, here are all my weather stations. Now I'm administrator, so I have access to a lot. You probably won't have as many as this in your, uh, on your phone or you're on your device. And you'll see, we've got it's basically a grid uh, with information. And this information, a lot of it is based on the last reading that we've got from your device. So I'm just going to flip it around a bit here. We'll go into landscape mode. And you can see here we've got the name of the location, a couple of icons here, which I'll come back to, the last reading we have for that location, and then the last reading values for that location. So this is temperature, for instance, humidity, and so on. I'll just, um, for instance, go out to iPad here. I'll just go to a bit bigger. So in iPad format here, we can see a little bit more, a little bit larger. So we've got our location name, and here's our information about the, from the last reading from that location. And we've got a reporting icon over here, which I'll go into in a minute. But first of all, I want to have a look at the ordering of here, and just getting around here. So each of these columns is orderable by clicking on the column heading. So say I click on temperature, for instance, that's going to order all my locations. And so this on the first click, it's from lowest temperature to highest temperature. So right now at 650, it's minus four degrees in Threadbow. If I click on that again, it will order it in the other way. So now the highest temperature location I have is Evans Head, 28 degrees. And I can do that with any of these columns which is a very handy feature if you want to find out things like that. You can also click on last so you'll find out which one updated most recently and which ones aren't up to date or aren't up to date or aren't updating. The other thing you can do is search and this search works on location name. 
So if I just type in ALCH, click on search, it will find anything with ALCH in the name. So it's if that text appears, appears anywhere in the name of the location. To clear that out, you just get rid of it, what you've, whatever you've typed in there, click on the search button, and you'll get everything back again. All right, so let's have a look at the icons that you can click on within this list. Starting over at the left here, we've got, you'll notice that these location names are all green, and that means it's a hyperlink. Let's click on Altringa Weather here, and that will take us to the Now page. And what I mean by Now page, this is what's going on right now at that location. Okay, so 25th of, 24th of August, 7.30 in the morning, 10 degrees high at 1, 7 degrees low at 7 a.m., humidity 63% and so on. And down here you'll notice our rain as well. So we've got rain since 9 a.m. and so on, and last 365 days or year to date. And you can also see here that we can go to our graphing page from here as well, and I'll come back to that in a second. So that's our Now page. And just to show you also something on this, this is the iPad view. If I just go back to my phone view, and we flip that around to landscape, what you'll see is that every, all of our sensor information is now in a carousel or slidable format. So just keep in mind or remember that there is more here and all of your sensors will be there. It's just a matter of sliding across. All right, let's go back to iPad mode here again, just a bit bigger. Let's go back to our uh, listing. So that's our Now page. The next thing on here you'll see is this little pin. And what the concept of this feature is, you may want to find locations that are near this location. So show me all the locations that are around, for instance, our Turinga weather. If I click on this icon, what that's going to do, it's going to order all my locations by distance from our Turinga weather. So obviously our Turinga weather is at zero kilometers, and it's this column here. The next closest location I have is Goanna Gundawindi. 7.18 kilometers and so on away from here and you can see up here it tells you this as well so it's telling you that the distances or the order we have here is from Altruvinga weather now the cool feature about that if I go back into my now page and if I swipe across this blue for instance it's taking me through that list that we were just on it's working its way down on the order as you can see here ordered by distance and this location is 7.1 kilometers from Altaringa Wither. If I slide across again, I get to the next one. So we're working our way through the order of that list that we came from, from top to bottom. I can swipe the other way and it will take me back. So that's a pretty cool feature there. Keep in mind that, that particular feature, if I just go back to my list, okay, sorry, go back here. If I go back to my list here, I can first of all remove that order so I want to get rid of the order by distance and the other cool thing is that ordering works on any of these columns so let's go back to putting things in temperature order and I go to Threadbow now when I swipe you can see here it's ordered by temp so now every time I go to the next location what it's doing is taking me to the next location by temperature or in fact whatever order I have that list in when I come into here so I could find out locations ordered by humidity, temperature, and so on. So that's a pretty cool little feature. What else have we got in our list here? The la Another feature of this screen is the ability to filter by active and inactive locations. And what this means is you may have a location which isn't active anymore. So we've turned it off. It's not collecting data, but you still want to be able to go back and look at the historical data, or graph the historical data on it. By default, locations that aren't active aren't visible in this listing. They're filtered out. So if you want to see them, you have to use this button up here. So currently it's telling you that it's showing active only. If I click on this button here, now it's showing me everything. So I've got active and inactive. I can also filter to just inactive. So these are just the inactive locations and so on. I go back to active only. Over in our far right hand column is our reporting column. So if I click on this icon, it takes me into our reporting page. 
I'm just going to expand that out, just going to desktop mode here, so I'm just going to view it as if I was on the desktop. And what you'll see is two calendars up in the top left hand corner. This one is for daily, so I can plot here if I pick the 3rd of August. Here is my data for the 3rd of August. We've got our time, air temperature, humidity and so on. And these columns are again sortable, so I can actually look at the maximum air temp. There's the minimum 11.1 degrees and the maximum 24.1 degrees. The other option here is monthly data, so I can look at the month of March. Now monthly data isn't every transaction, it's actually a summary for each day. So let's have a look at the day, for instance, so here's our day, 0 to 31. I can look at temperature, so here's our maximum temperature, sorry, minimum temperature of 24.2, or our maximum temperature, and there's the time that that maximum occurs, so maximum temperature of 36.5 degrees at 15.30. Now I can do that for any column, so that's the minimum temperature, the time of minimum temperature, maximum humidity, time of maximum humidity, and so on. Now on the desktop version, you also have these two buttons here. Now these will not appear on a mobile device, but on your desktop, I can export this data out to Excel or export it out to PDF. And that is our reporting. Let's go back into iPad mode here. The last thing we want to go to is graphing. So this icon here takes you to the graphing page. So let's go in to the graphing for our the weather. On this page, I can look at the historical data for this location. And you'll see at the top here, here's our date range options. And then underneath that are the sensors that are available on this location. So that will be filtered if some sensors aren't available in that location, you won't see them here. And then you've got the detail details of the location and what sort of selections I've picked. Also on this, just also another thing to keep in mind, if I was on say a phone, let's go back to phone mode here, again these are scrollable. So there are more over here and again this as well. So when you're down on the iPhone always remember that these sections at the top here are usually scrollable. So let's go back out to the iPad here back into landscape mode. Now all these features work on any any dimension, it's just in uh, this one I get to see a bit more. Alright, so seven days for instance, air temp. So selecting your data is just as simple as that. It's just a matter of selecting the date range you want and the sensor you want. The other cool feature about this is you can add as many sensors as you want. So say I want air temperature and humidity, then I can just select humidity as well and it will plot my humidity over my rain. And I can add as many as you want. Obviously there are some limits as we go across here. Uh, it just starts banking up a bit and you start getting too many columns. So it's, it's good for a few. The other thing I can do here is I can actually select a custom date range. So say I just want to look at a few particular day back in uh, July, July 6th, through to, say, July 8. And that gives me just that data for that date range. And that is our graphing page. Let's go back now to our listing. And then go back to our Maps page. Now that you know what a now page and a graphing page is, it will make a bit more sense when I show you these. So when I click on one of these locations, down the bottom here you have a link that will take you back to those two pages. So I can go to my now page for that location by clicking on that link. So it's our now page for that location and I can go back to our map, back into here, or I can go into my graphing for that location. So just letting you know basically that you can shortcut off to the now page or graphing page for any location from the map. Right, let's do a couple more last features here. On the map here, 
what I may want to do, so I'll just go out a bit here. What you'll see here is quite a lot of weather stations. Now, I've, that's because I can view all the bomb weather stations, so it can become a little bit crowded. What I might want to do is filter this map so I can only see certain kinds of devices. And we can do that using this icon up here. If I click on that, this will basically let me filter on a whole lot of things. First of all, I can hide the bomb. So let's just do that one first. So I'll click that. To apply this filter, I click on the search icon at the top right here. And now it's filtered away all my bomb sites. Now, I go, okay, well that's good, but I might want to get rid of the weather stations altogether, which are the light blue ones. Say I just want to focus particularly on dam monitors. If I go back into my filter, all I have to do is take away a tick next to all the things I want. So all I'm including here are dam monitors. So now I apply that filter here by clicking on that button again. And now I've filtered my map just down to dam monitors and I can much more easily navigate around my dam monitors. Also what I can do from here is I can flip straight back to my list of locations. So this icon here, if I click on that, that'll take me back to the list of locations, again filtered by dam monitor. So it keeps that filtering. The reason it does this is because I can actually filter this list in exactly the same way. And just to clarify what this list is, if I was to click in my navigation here on locations, then it would take me to this list. It's a list of locations that you have, and it's not filtered or categorized by the kind of location it is. So it's a complete listing of all your locations. Again, I can apply the same filter. You'll see down here a filter button, and it's the same filter. So I could now include rain gauges, weir monitors, and so on. I'll put them all back in there. Again, I apply that filter by clicking on the search button. And now I have everything again. And likewise, again, top right, can, top right hand corner, this icon here will just flip me back to the map. And because I've included all my bomb, or all my weather stations, and all my different device types, Again, I can see them again here on the map. So the same filtering applies to the list, or that filtering also applies to the map. And I can go back to the list again here, or I can go back to the map. All right. In terms of navigation, there's one more feature I want to show you, and that is this little icon up here. And that is a bookmarking feature. So what you can do here as you come into the app, you might have a favorite page that you always want to go to when you start the app. It might be a particular weather station, for instance. So let's do that. Let's go to a particular weather station. And let's say I click on that. It tells me here it's now my default page. So now, whenever I come into the app, that is going to be the first page that I go to. And I can bookmark pretty much any page on here. So if you have a particular page that you like to land on, all you have to do is make it your default page using that icon. Okay, so let's go back here. There's a couple more things. We're on our locations page here. So remember, this is a list of all our locations, no matter what kind of device type they are. So they're all together here in one list. Down here, I can actually navigate to any of those and you'll see here these pins and these pin colors are exactly what you would get on the map as well so if you want to know what pin represents what kind of device type this is where you can find out so this little navigation bar down here that brings up this menu and i can go to my weather stations here and this is equivalent to clicking on these menu items down here it's just a, a way of navigating to those items from this page so I can go to my tank monitors, for instance, from here. So that's a general how-to on the app at the moment. Now there are other videos as well for individual features, so be sure to check them out on the YouTube website as well. Thanks.